Jesus. You can hear this phone.
Will that be only thing I just talk about? Oh, I'm beginning to ramble on. Am I not? Now, Dr. Falabi, I understand that Africa's heads of state will soon start a debate at the Pinecall Hotel. That's that is two streets from here, and uh, I'll be carving the news for the. I'll, I'll be carving the news for the for the dump. Yeah. So tell me, could you give me some background? What should be the heart of the debate? Uh, well, thank you for asking me that. You see, they will be debating a document titled Way Omega. <coughs> Not too long ago, 20 Nobel laureates discovered a way to develop Africa. Now, they, they took that discovery and put it in a document with that title. Uh, need 50, 50, let's see, I, I don't know how to put this. Anyway, uh, ministers for planning had a look at it and they liked it. Now, 50 heads of state are in Banjul, but that is as a common way to develop all of Africa. Oh, what are your expectations of the summit, Dr. Palabi? My expectations? Uh -huh. Don't get me started. Well, I expect the summit to be a historic moment. Uh -huh. Just imagine this. If Oyomega gets adopted, it will change Africa's politics dramatically. Just imagine an Africa without civil wars, without military coup, without rigged elections. <coughs> Period. And yet we have some of the heads of state. I understand that not all of the heads of state assembled here are fair players. In fact, some are out and out fall players. And um, those won't be walking along way Omega anytime soon, or will they? Now, let me, let me put it simple. Mm -hmm. You see, change is always like that. It always has the defender's side and the challenger's side of the existing arrangement. Yeah. Oh, what did you say, Dr. Fadal? Well, you're not listening to me anymore. Are you Miss McKenna? <coughs> well, I was saying, anyway, I was saying, if way Omega gets adopted, it's going to give Africa a new course, free from East obstacles that are defeated these past efforts. You see? Just imagine an Africa without civil wars, without clashes, without military coups, you see? And yet we have your book, Failure of States. What makes you this optimistic about Africa's future now when in your book you're very pessimistic? Did you just say my book was pessimistic? Yes, I did. You see, pessimistic is not really the okay, one Okay, look, word. look, look. Let me put it in another way. What makes you this optimistic when before you're pessimistic? I heard it the first then time. Then answer my damn question. I see. I had misjudged you, Miss Mackenzie. I thought you were a well-mannered, proper journalist. But instead, all I see is this one of these five eaters who, who confuse journalism with bad manners. Okay, let me put it in another way. Yeah. Why did you, where, where did you attend this summit? Well, I did not attend. I was invited. That means the president wanted me there. Repeat the word president. They saw the merit in my book that you dismiss as pessimistic and they wanted me to ensure them that way Omega agrees with it. Anyway, I'm not going to defend my book in front of anyone, especially at least of all these 3D third rated reporters for the Zambian news. Gambia. Whatever. Now, Dr. Folabi, can you think right through your book and give me an example, a specific example on which way Omega agrees with the book? Yes, I can. Uh -huh. Hello. Dr. Folebi, something came up. I have to go. The silly boss wants me back at the office. But now, in just a while, what was the specific example you're about to give? Let me see if I get you here. Someone claims you claim to be a boss, calls you, and now you want me to compress my whole book into an example. You know bosses, they don't like to be kept waiting, okay? Uh -huh, let me go. And uh, what do you suggest? I, I, you know I can come back later. No. Nah. Never. Then what do you suggest? I suggest you go read the book. Not only its cover. And now if you excuse me, I have somewhere to go. <laughs> okay. Nine heads of state had assembled in Banjur, the Gambia. And were they not happy? For sure they were. And perhaps they had run from the troubles of their country and so they came to this country which was Gambia as the people of, of, of uh, that place used to call it the land of Kuntu Kinta. Now all the 49 heads of state were assembled in this place. Now security was a very big, uh, 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 was a very big, uh, um, uh, was a very big issue to cut for. They had to assemble all the 49 heads of state in the Pinnacle Hotel that had solved it. Another huge uh, issue that was there was on how the Gambian, uh, on how the 49 heads of state were going to sit. So the alphabetic, uh, uh, the alphabetic order of the names of their country really sort of this. So such a country like Angola got the first, uh, uh, got the space uh, near 
the uh, the uh, got the first uh, spaces, and then the country such as Zambia got the last spaces. Another issue that was there was their accommodation. So they used these for, uh, two pillars to cut uh, for their accommodation, so that they could get a very secure security. And those two pillars stood on first the intelligence, and second the combat. Those two pillars they used really to cut for the security of all the 49 head of state that were in this hotel, the Pinnacle Hotel. Another issue that was there was on how these people were going to be accommodated in these rooms. But still, the alphabetic order of the names of the countries got uh, solved all this. So the countries such as uh, Angola got the first uh, applause. Countries such as Zambia, Zimbabwe got the upper floors. Another big issue that was there was on which of the number of floors that every country could get. But they settled on four rooms per every head of state. That was a very good and a warm welcome to the Gambia. All the 49 of, uh, heads of state were here ready for the summit. Up, uh, the phone rang at the West Wing at the Simon Hotel. And now Pastor Chiamaka answered the call. And the caller identified himself as uh, the guy. And the caller had called him earlier. When he looked at his watch, it was 9 p.m. in the evening. When we all get to heaven, what a day of Hello. Yes. Pastor Chiamaka, is everything Hello. going okay? Yes, everything is doing okay. Did you look at the contents of your briefcase? Of course I did. Then you saw the letters from Agda, didn't you? Yes. I will turn to it shortly. First, tell me this. What other things did you see in your briefcase? Just a minute. Now, I saw a copy of Fui Omega, the development strategy that Nobe Rollins have crafted to end up as missile. And now, African head of state, I expect to adopt to their service. Okay, go on. I also saw a copy of Part Alpha, the development strategy that NGDA believes is superior with order to weigh Omega. And now, it hopes to replace the way Omega. Good. Agda wants you to be fully familiar with both of those documents. Continue. I also saw some leaflets from QS and pamphlets from SGDA. Now, skip those. What else? Oh, well, I also saw this mobile phone I'm using now. Excellent. Keep that mobile phone on all times, day and night, rain or shine, from now on. I'll be calling you on often, even unexpectedly, but only through this number. So always have the mobile phone on, and like your hotel phone, it's completely secure, which means I can talk to you on it freely. So, will you mind to tell me your real name? My real name? My real name, why? Well, why yourself? If I don't have your real name, how can I even begin to ask for you when need arise to do so? When need to when need to do so to arrive, I will contact you. Ah you can contact me, but I cannot contact you. Shut That's your the... mouth. What did you say? You heard me. Now get this. I want you to obey me, not to argue with me. You will not talk to me back like this ever. Do you understand? Yes, right. Yeah, yes, I understand. Splendid. So Pastor Chiamaka, let me say what I was going to say if you had let me. What I was going to say is I was going to say that it's best if you keep on initiating all communication between us. Look, you and I are supposed to be working together. We are on the same mission. So, why would you tell me your real name? I won't, because our mission is still at delicate stage. For that reason, I'd rather prefer you didn't know who I really am yet, <coughs> until I tell you otherwise. Just call me your guide. Needless to say, I won't let, I won't let you see my face either, but you'll hear my voice. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me? Of course there is. Why should I trust you? Ah, yes. Why should you trust me? Well, go back to the letter from Agda. It has the answer. Quote, you are not to have any less faith in him just because he, he identifies himself to you only by his allies. Young, your guide, unique, unquote. The reference base to, me, to Pastor Chiamaka. That's why you should trust me, okay? 
Fine. What are you going to ask? Fine, let's go back to way Omega and Path Alpha. Then, as I said, Agda wants you to be fully familiar with both documents. Are you? Pastor yes, Chema? yes, I am. Then there isn't any more left for me to add. Oh, actually, this I was there on an hour ago. Oh, where were you an hour ago? To get right to the point, I saw you in the bar at the Seamount Hotel. <laughs> of course, I was there having a Pepsi. <laughs> a Pepsi? Is that right? Do you know what, Mr. Whoever you are? You are now getting on my nerves. You can see and identify me, but I can just walk right past you and not know. What were you doing there? Spying on me? I think it would be best if you apologize, Pastor oh, Chiamma. Oh, you want me to apologize for what? What business had you been in a bar, Pastor Chiamma? All right, I had no business being at the bar. It was just a soft drink, and I, I promise I'm going to do it again. You had better not. Oh, my goodness. So you say, good night, Pastor. Before taking off, he was already afraid. That was the reason. But then, the university, uh, the, uh, by then Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and now dismantled the, the University of East Africa. Now Kenya's part, uh, renowned it as uh, the University of Nairobi. Me? But now with it, it had a vacancy and air to fill. Now, having graduated from the University of Oxford, Professor Karanja Kimani had to fill but then for the university to ensure that the a vacancy had to be fulfilled, they had to increase the chances of the entry. And that he, he had to come in as a senior a lecturer of the university. He started a very noisy debate that the country, that uh, the university should strive for a relevancy in the society uh, 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 rather than being just uh, uh, striving for an excellency, an excellency of its work. And this really got uh, 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 this really got hot on the university. But later on, he won on this debate, and that few uh, months later, the university motto changed from uh, uh, changed to the relevancy of the society. A month later, it began another uh, very noisy debate that uh, the university should be an agent of change, not just a mere spectator of it. Africa was not spared at all. Yes, jobs and vacancies, they were all vanished. But then Africa to change, change was needed. Change, change, change was everywhere. Professor Karanja Kimani. Global economicization. Initially and before Africa was in a very good state. We professors, we teachers and all other stakeholders in education, we both earned well, and we could take care of our families. But it was still, it was not until they, what we call the global economic recession came. Look, it changed everything. I am a full professor. <clears throat> I cannot even take care of my families because my salaries are very low. But how exactly can we change our Africa? Oh. Yeah, what did Africa do? Oh, Tun. Uh, uh, welcome, my, 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 my dear daughter. You see, you find me, you found me talking about... Uh, why, why are you bringing me? This is ice cream, Dad. Oh, ice cream. Hey, nowadays, ice cream. My dear daughter, Tun, uh, dear daughter, you found me talking about the global economic recession. Yes. This, it was the changes behind all, all, this, all, all uh, the changes in Africa, too. And the donors were the forces behind it all. You see, Tuni. Do you know what the donors told Africa? They told Africa that you will not get any financial aid from us unless you do this, that, and the other. Understand? Dad, you're not enjoying. And uh, let me tell you what Africa did. Africa did exactly as it was told. You see, Tuni. It was good that uh, the donors hung up, go, gang, 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 gang up go. If we're not for the donors, we're still reciting the same cliches of uh, importing um, or improving our own development strategies instead of importing foreign models. That is what Africa did. Actually, I'm not enjoying it. It's too cold, eh? But Tuni, sadly, you can have it. You see, these are the, 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 the nowadays cakes. The nowadays yeah, ice creams, eh? Cold ice cream. Uh, cold ice cream. Yes, Dad. Thank you so much. Now, Tuni. Yes, Dad. Sadly, 
this changes only the late changes only catalyzes excess. And it is nowhere are those these changes more rampage than in parliament. The same institutions that uh, the epitolize change. Nowhere are these uh, 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 changes more evident than in the coups that the parliament stage. The parliament stage absolutely, and they stage it successfully. Tony, as I was saying, the year I started teaching, a professor and more than an MP. And I repeat, more than an MP. But look at it now, Tony. A single MP earns a hundred times more than a professor. And I repeat, a hundred times more than a professor. And all this, Tony, to make more world matters worse, the earnings by professors are still deemed to salaries, which are taxable. Where those of MPs have uh, long since to be taxable. And uh, all these things, their exemption from taxation and their raising of their wages came up with the coups that the parliament staged. I thought the days of coups were over. <laughs> you thought that the days of coups were over. <laughs> Think again, Tuni. Nowadays, we not only have coups by soldiers, but we also have coups by parliaments. And the later coups are even more lethal because they are legal. Tuni, is it legal for lawmakers to raise their wages as they please? Yes. You see, legal does not mean uh, moral or even no more. It only means permitted by law. That's that what I'm possible? That's possible. Now, my dear daughter Tuni, <coughs> after all this has happened, after the parliaments have raised their wages as they please, these changes become irreversible. You see, Tuni, even if God himself cannot lower the earnings by MPs, and so do mayor MPs, but as the parliaments come, if the new parliaments come, I know you will uh, try to imagine that they will they, they, they will vote away the old parliaments, eh? But okay, when they vote, when the elections come, mm -hmm. the electors will vote them out, oh, right? Let, well, well, no problem. But uh, when you say so, you simply impl imply the same thing as uh, when the rates fall, they wash away the spots of Haina, eh? But now think. And listen to me. New parliaments are even all more worse than the old parliaments. No, they are even more worse. New parliaments even raise their wages as they please. You see, parliaments are even more worse than armies. Worse than armies? Yes. Dad, I'm serious. You are serious. I'm also serious. And now, listen to me. You see, soldiers may stage coups, yes, eh? but they can't legalize their actions. What they do is simply to break the law. But MPs do even worse. They break the law and legalize their actions. That is what I mean. I can get it now. You can get it, eh? But, uh, Tony, the French people always say that as things keep on changing, and so do they remain the same. You see, the, same, the changes in Africa, there is no change in Africa. The changes in Africa is only a replacement by tyranny by, uh, by governments with a tyranny by MPs. As things all keep on changing, okay. so do they keep on remaining the same. And we have also implemented our own version of the same. We say that we say to Mumpia, Nyani Wale Wale. The new forest, same old monkey. Exactly, that's what I mean. Eh? Okay, yes. yes. But uh, now you are worrying when. <laughs> will I, when will I leave uh, teaching, eh? Okay, Dad. Yeah. Hmm? Have you thought of going into politics? Me. <coughs> joining politics, I mean. Me, me joining politics? Yeah. No. A whole professor? I, I cannot join politics. Teaching is my career, eh? And I can't join politics. Now, Tuni, thank you for the lunch and the cold ice. Cold ice you brought me. My dad, yeah. we are not going to join the politics. Yeah. Rather go. You rather go. Zia. My husband. Oh, honey. Oh, honey, nah. How are you? I'm fine. My husband. You are fine. Yes. I'm also fine. Welcome home. Zia. We were with the Tony at the marketplace today. Mm. Hey, 
Uh, how was your day been? Hey, very fine, very fine. You see, before you came in, yeah? I was cooking. Oh, Maybe you were cooking? The table. That's, why, that's why I love. <laughs> Personal safety isn't the thing we get by attending seminars. <laughs> it is a necessity that the government should provide for us. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, personal safety isn't a thing attending seminars. It is a necessity that the government should provide for us. Yes, Tuni. And then if it does not, then safety becomes a private arrangement that we have to make for ourselves. But Dad, before you get to render the, tax, the taxes, mm. our, our taxes are bleed to give. Some of us intend to test taxes that are for sure on personal safety. Like what? Well, yeah. such as precautions against male violence. Mm. Over two thirds of women mm. witness this on themselves or on, on other women. On other women. <laughs> Mom, as a woman, you should be showing me some interest here. Yes, but I am Tuni. Go on, please. <laughs> mm. Tuni, do not mind your father here. What else did your instructor to teach you? Well, she said there are three reasons why women are easy prey. What? She? Yes, the seminar instructor was a woman. Mm. And the first reason she said is, Lack of look, <laughs> look of awareness. Mm -hmm. We should be aware of where we are as women mm -hmm. and what is going around us. Secondly, she said that look of helpless mm -hmm. and weak. Mm -hmm. We should be looking strong and bold. And the third reason she uh, said uh, is. Uh. A tray of temptation. Huh. We should not be walking in the bad neighborhood or use the stairs while the elevators. Uh, I see. I see another slow day at work. <laughs> but surely you knew that already, eh? Dad, eh? it's not about knowing, eh? it's about doing. <laughs> okay, Tony. Money. Huh? Can you ask your daughter? Okay, go on. Ma, you are not going to like it. Why won't I? Because it's what you do. No, I don't. You do it, Mama. Don't deny. The seminar instructor said when women complete doing their errand shopping, mm -hmm. they like sitting in their cars for a little while before leaving. Mm. But I do not do that. You do it, Mom. Don't deny. No, I don't. You do it. I'm your mother. To me, listen to one, me. One I do voice, not. One voice at a time. You do it. <laughs> Okay, Julie. You know what, Mom? When you finish doing your shopping, mm -hmm. you just get into your car. Uh -huh. Continue, I'm listening. <laughs> you get into your car. I'm also listening. <laughs> you just get into your car, close on the doors, and drive over at once. <laughs> now, what you've said that uh, the predators are gone. You know what? 
You do as he says, Duni. You comply. No, no ma'am. Mm. What if you are just getting out of the shop and the predator has called you before getting into the car? You comply, Duni. I'm your mother. He said, ma'am, listen to me, Duni. You comply. You do as he says. I'm not sure if I want to hear what your stupid instructor told you again. Okay, mother. Mm. What if when you are just driving and the predator is sitting beside you and he has a gun? You should not, mother. You know what you should do. <laughs> Comply. I say comply. I'm your mother. You should listen to me. This stupid instructor of yours did not teach you well, okay? That's what the seminar instructor said. By the way, Dad, eh? should I use the car tomorrow? Wait, before you reach there, you said that we should crash it. No, our family has only a dying to out outside here. How do you expect us to crash that thing? You us? just crash it. You are out of your mind. You too. just crash it. <laughs> Dad, have you had? I want to use the car tomorrow. You want to use the car tomorrow? Yes. The only car is our car. Our car. The same cars you want to crash. So you want mine, you're going to crash. <laughs> but it's our car now. Oh, they're our car. <laughs> <laughs> then if it is our car, then you will trade tomorrow. But our my husband. Yeah, we use it. I'll use it and I'll crash it. Uh, yeah. You help her with fair so that she can use tomorrow. With the fair? Yes. Did you hear? Do, you did, can did, think did, I think I you more. Uh, did you hear how your, your daughter was speaking to me? Like the car is hers. But she's only a child. Oh, uh, only a child. Yes. Then she will trek tomorrow. No, my baby. Eh? Oh. <laughs> Call me again. <laughs> Call me another sweet name. <laughs> 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 you give the girl, how, how much is it? It's only 500. Call me another name. Honey. I will give you. It is 500. Yes. Eh? Then I will give a 1000. <laughs> but before we go to sleep, eh? I have something I want to tell you. Have a seat. You want to tell? Yes. I love, I love being here. <laughs> I love hearing things, eh? Uh, my husband. Hey. Why don't you leave the university? Okay, why don't you leave teaching? You go search for green pastures elsewhere. You see, like the like newborn alone, mm. he left teaching and doing politics. Mm. Now he's an MP with four cars. Mm. Left teaching and doing politics. Now with four cars. Yes. Oh. So you want me to leave politics, uh, leave teaching and join politics? Yes. After 30 years I've been staying with you when I'm a teacher. Eh? Now see, ya. can you do like this? <laughs> Is your brain having brain? <laughs> In fact, it's having brain. Now my, 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 dear, my dear wife, that's I've told you and I, I will continue telling that it is impossible. Teaching is my career and I cannot join politics in any way, okay? Okay, my husband. Uh, otherwise, I love you very much. And uh, I think we can go. And uh, you see, we only have one child, eh? Yes. <laughs> and now, with the assistance of our father, Tony commenced a journey very early in the morning. No sooner had she commenced a journey than she was involved in a road accident. First, it was a loud crash. A moving object had hit another moving object. A trailer had hooked itself to a truck. Both drivers ran for their safety to avoid the mob justice. The unlucky passengers tried to scramble out of the window, except for one, that was a female. She strained, but she could not manage to come out of the window. A gentleman who tried to swallow, tried to come into the vehicle to help her come out, but he couldn't manage. Therefore, he had to pick his call to dial a mystical number, 999 for the rescue. What? Thank <laughs> you. 
You better start doing the correct thing right now. No, uh, I know, I, I, I get you right now. Hey, good, dear. good, good, good. My, my dear wife, eh? Hey, you are here. Now, uh, I told you and I will continue to, to tell you that I have a seat, my dear. I'm not sitting. Huh? I am not sitting. Are you not sitting? I brought these chairs for you. Just for you. We for, for me. I brought these chairs for you. You <laughs> get yourself. Nonsense. When, when someone tells you that... Like, you see, this is a hole, and then you are just dragging yourself to enter inside there. Are you even normal? Is this your head functioning? Uh, my dear daughter. In my, fact, my, my dear, wait, wait, my dear wife. Wait, eh? yes, yes. This is something I want to tell you. Thank you very much. Rise, 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 and let's come. Tell me, my dear wife, eh? Okay, my dear husband. Yes, thank you very much for calling me, dear. I'm leaving. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, I'm leaving. Newborn. What, what, what do you mean you are leaving? Newborn has uh, asked to marry me. Newborn. Are you, are you talking about me, newborn Walom? Yes, Walom. The, 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 the Yes. Mm. Exactly. Oh. So you want to do? Sasa, so, uh, uh, see ya. See ya. Now you want to leave me. Just because of newborn one, almost money that makes you hey, leave me, right? Now you speak of money. Uh, you, have you no shame to say money? As if it all fell on your lap and carried all the shame away. Won't you have the reason to say that money does not... Eh? What I'm saying, eh, I'm not, that's not what I mean, see, eh? eh? What do you mean? What I mean is that money does not guarantee happiness. Fine, fine, it does not guarantee happiness, my friend. Yes. And as if it all given, it all were given to you, would you say that money does not guarantee happiness? What, that's not what I mean, see, eh? what, what I mean, mean that nevertheless, eh? Eh? money, eh, even the rich people have their own portion of happiness, you see. Uh, plus, there is something that becomes, uh, that, that problem that, becomes, uh, that comes uh, as a result of their wealth. <laughs> you say that even the, the rich one have what? Uh, they are portion of their wealth. Fine, why don't they give it simply away? But that's not what I mean. But uh, uh, in, in any case... Now, then you are telling me that's not what you mean. What do you mean? What I mean is this, uh, eh. my dear Asiya. Eh? Eh. Is this the right time for us to part? Hmm? Mm. Is 60 years an age to part? Hey. You say 60. 60. 60. Wait. <laughs> so you mean I should have left earlier before I turn 60? Eh? Well, I did not, does not mean I will not. And if I will now, does not mean I do, I will stay right here. And does it mean that if I won't go, I will stay? In fact. <laughs> Sixty years and you're dipping. <laughs> 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 my dear, don't be a man. See ya, see ya. But is is this is this an age to part? Soon as the date of our death, the date of our daughter soon. <laughs> you you have are you even in your right senses to tell me that after the death of Tuni, Tuni will still be alive if you had a real car. <laughs> But, uh, it is soon after the death of our daughter. Why can't we just stay here for some uh, for some time and then? then... You and who? You and who? Eh? <laughs> you and who? And my dear wife. Yeah, and your dear wife. Go dear yourself. Go dear plan that bed and the chair and everything. I'm gone. See ya, see ya, please. I uh, see ya. Just last, one last chance. Eh? Mm. I will do everything in my power. I will even stand myself. <laughs> I'm ready to even sell myself so that... <laughs> okay, okay. Yes. I have loved you since then. Thank you so much. In fact, I'm not going to love you. Not today. Not will it be tomorrow or but, never. But, but, I'm, I'm gone. I'm gone. I beg. But to prove his anger, he introduced himself as professor.
Professor Karanja Kimani. And now, he passed through the access, and what he knew who was behind that door, it was Newborn Uwalomu, the MP. And now, when he went inside, he was fought as usual, seated in his, in his seat. Yes, he now called him, you fought, Baboon. Where is he? Where, 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 where's, that, where's, where's that thing? Where, where is that thing? <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Don't smile at me. Where is that part of him? I want that part of him. Where is he? Outside the office of a law. He's in his office. Thank you so much, and very important. <laughs> So you are here, are you hip hop? <laughs> ah! Karanja! I can see it, hip hop. Oh! Karanja! This is my office and expect you to use nothing, and I mean nothing but civil language in my office. Have a seat. I've said hip hop. Okay! Remain standing forever you think I can. <laughs> Let me guess. I think you've come to ask why I want to marry your wife. Why, why do you want to steal my wife? Oh, the word I use is marry. Now that you prefer steal, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm, nah, remember my MP. Hey. Uh, Walomu, you have three lovely wives. Mm. And both of them are young. But my wife is just 60 years. <laughs> now, on top of your three young wives, you are adding my 60 years wife. <laughs> ah, Karanja! Ah, as you say, I have three beautiful wives. And forever they shall be. You are asking me why I want to marry your Asia. <laughs> Uh, you remember, old is gold. <laughs> yeah, she's old and she's a gold. <laughs> so, 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 that's why you decided to marry my wife. Uh, 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 is gold. No, 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 I remember that old say, say that uh, a bull dies with a green snack. Mm. <laughs> yes. But, but ma, ma, uh, ma, 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 Mr. Walom, what's the, 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 the so-called thing you call yourself? Now, my wife is 60 years of age. True. <laughs> not, uh, not, not the greener person I want in the, bull of a, uh, 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 in the mouth of a bull. Not true. Now, why do you want to steal? Oh, you know. But I don't have your time right now. First, you steal my wife. And then now, you mock me. Eh? Karanga. Now you mock me. Eh? No, Karanga, please. Please, remain standing there always. I will lose my devil. What is Karanja! <laughs> Karanja, you better stand where you are! Then you now mock me. Come on! Karanja, Karanja! Karanja, Karanja! I will eat you! Karanja, I will eat you! Karanja, I will eat you! Karanja! Let me send you something, eh? 
Send him something. Send him two million. Eh? Don't mention to anyone. Eh? Good man. Thank you. Let that man be detained. And he has to be fine. No, 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 Kimani was arrested for assaulting the member of parliament and the suit followed by the university. He was demoted from a full professor to a senior lecturer. And now, after six, uh, six, uh, six months of jail followed and he was uh, set free, he walked back to his home dejectedly and what is uh, foot ahead of a foot, what he could see was his career. And now this fine morning, as he was uh, worried from the weary uh, lack, of lack of sleep, he had a knock at the door. He grabbed onto the door and to open it. Really, <laughs> My wife went. Now I'm just alone like a punk. <laughs> <laughs> Is this you, Professor Kimani? Why are you pointing at me? Uh, yes, uh, yeah. Uh. Ted. Uh. Ted is long way. Ted, yeah. Director at Special Project at Staff. Make that the Agency for Governance and Development in Africa, and we are based in Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, well, Mr. Ted. Ted. Ted years. Ted years. Long way. Ted years, long way. How may I help you? Uh, Samak, also known as Mr. Mark Thatcher, is the son of former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. Does his name perhaps ring a bell? Perhaps it does, perhaps it does not. Uh, Samak uh, lives in South Africa these days, as I have told you. Uh, now, a few years ago, he hired soldiers. No, mercenaries. No, missionaries might even be a better word, actually. Uh, you see, they believe they want a mission, but uh, call them whatever you want. My point is this, Samak hired them to go stage a coup in Equatorial Guinea. Now, the government of South Africa hold him in and charged him a million dollars. Add to that a four-year jail sentence, which it immediately suspended. So, Mr. Terrius Longway. Yes. So you are saying that the relevance of attempted coup in Equatorial Guinea and your visit here was not Oh, actually, I wasn't saying there was any such relevance, Professor Kimani, mm. but still, you are right to guess uh, I was. Uh, do you see what I mean? I don't see. Uh, I, I, I can't see anything. Oh, you can't see? Then perhaps you should let me to come in just for a minute. One minute. Oh, yes, and I'll be brief. One minute. Uh, Professor Kimani. Okay. What our president ever do to us is to ride on our backs. Is that true? And uh, we must stop them from riding on our backs. You are riding my house. <laughs> ah, you see, Professor Kimani, okay. what these people do to us is not okay. We must stop them from riding on our backs. I mean us. Africans. Wait, 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 did you say as Africans? Yes, I said as Africans. Okay. Professor Kimoni, okay. I am as an African. Or as we say back home, as African. Now, I am just as much an African as you are. Then you go judging me by the color of my cover. No, I was not judging you by any color. <laughs> 
Now, uh, uh, Mr. Talong. Yes. I'm sorry if I were. I, it seemed I was. So please continue. Oh, thank you, yeah. Professor Kimani. Yeah. What our presidents ever do to us is to ride on our backs. We must stop them from doing this to us. You see, at independence. They told us our problems are three, poverty, ignorance, and diseases, and they promised to eradicate all three. Decades later, have they eradicated even one? Oh, perhaps they have added a fourth, corruption. And this time you don't hear them promising to eradicate it because at its primary beneficiaries, they mean to keep it. Result, everyone has taken cue from them and embraced corruption as well. Listen, Professor Kimani, I get sick uh. each time I hear our president telling the police to stop taking bribes. Why should they stop when those who tell them to stop take even bigger bribes? I'll tell you something else, Professor Kimani. Our presidents are now busy adding a fifth, a fifth problem right under our noses, impunity. Don't you see how far they have just gone with it by just looking at their reluctance to punish offense? They just don't want to do it. Now, will they change? No. To change, there has to be an agency with a will to change. Wait, do you mean you know of an agency somewhere that has the will to change Africa? Yes, EBDA. What is that? Make that the agency for governance and development in Africa. I can see it. You are identity. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> now, but uh, Mr. Tadius Nongwe. Yes. Now, suppose I join you. Mm. Now, be keen in this. Eh? Mm. I'm not saying I will join you. <laughs> I've said, suppose I join you. Yes. What do you expect from me? Oh, of course, uh, Professor Kimani. Uh, there will be many opportunities for us for me to answer that question fully later. Uh, for now, let me tell you just two things. Uh, One. If you will accept to join Padalfa, we will want you to come down, come down for our orientation at Cape Town so, uh, uh, in Banjo. And second, we would like you to go attend a summit in Banjo, the Gambia. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> you want me to attend? Oh, summit? first check this. Uh, that document entitled Padalfa is yours. Uh, yes, but now you want me to attend the summit. Ah, uh, my friend. My, 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 my goodness, I can't even uh, be allowed to enter through the gates. Oh, my friend, eh? never worry about that. Mm. Leave that to us. Uh. Uh, you just come and you see, we'll have uh, a place for you. Uh. Yes, of course. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll look into it. Eh? Yes, Professor Kimani, yeah. let it stew in your mind mm. uh, for the rest of the day. As you do other things, mm. then tonight, kick it back in the sheets, kick it back and forth, back and forth. Back and forth. Oh, thank you, Professor Kimani. Thank you, so much. thank you so much. I will kick back and forth. <laughs> Another. I had said earlier that I can't join politics in any way, but let me go and read into it. Maybe it may have something that has the will to change Africa. A daughter, dissertation by a wife, mistreatment by his university, and the state really changed Professor Kimani. You see, at the first time he thought that he was born a teacher and so he will die a teacher, but this was not the case anymore. He wished that he would walk away from teaching and never to come back, never to be seen again. He wished that he could have a new project to engage himself in, and suddenly, there it was, half, half. Mrs. Mackenzie hopped into a taxi at the Seamount Hotel and headed back to her office. She had promised her boss to be back in an hour. This estimate had overlooked the recent phenomenon, roadblocks, they were everywhere. Pedestrians and motorists had to stop for inspection. A two hour estimate would have been better thought. So now she thought. Her taxi driver is suffering, worry and watchful. He was part of the African growing phenomenon. Well, he located Mrs. Mackenzie without difficulty. Ah, uh, Mrs. Mackenzie, let's go. You are gone for two eternities. Did you have any particular reason? Uh, Miss Mackenzie. Uh-huh. Uh, be serious, eh? I'm serious. <laughs> uh, 
What do we do? Yes. Old man, get out of that car. I said get out of that car, old man. Get out of this car. What? Is this a car? Is this, is this close to being a car? You young lady, get out of get out of that car. Get out of that car. Oh, oh. Officer. What is this car first of all? It has 40 brakes. Officer. Where are the brakes? This is not a car, my guy. This is not a car. There is no need there. Eh? No need to what? Uh, let me talk to you in a minute, yes, 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 yes. In a minute. Talk to me. You know, you know, you know, we should not, uh, we should not quarrel, eh? Well, eh? you see, you see, my friend, this car of yours, it is very good. <laughs> I can see the brakes are very sharp. Ah. What, what model is this? It eh? is a Mercedes uh, uh, C350. Yes. Yes, this is a good car. It's a very good car, my friend. Ah, okay. you, you should be on with your way. Thank Where is your passenger? You. Thank you, officer. Yes, call back you your passenger. Away. Ah, I'm thank sorry, you. I'm sorry, my friend. Thank you, officer. But uh, yes, we'll have a cup of tea later on. Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, thank you very much. It's good, man. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miss Mackenzie. You are gone for two eternities. Do you have any particular reason? Be serious, Miss Mackenzie. I take it you're referring to the guards. What did they do? Uh, you mean what well, they were essentially they wanted something small. Don't you mean a bribe? Why would they want a bribe? Miss Mackenzie. I'm serious. Be serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. Right. <laughs> you know. Uh-huh. What do they say? Uh they normally say that uh, my vehicle has faulty brakes. Well, maybe it does. It does. <laughs> Alright, it does. <laughs> <laughs> And now, does it have 40 breaks? I guess not. So what did you do? Give them something small anyway? You know what, Miss McKenzie? I'm going to go back there and tell them to arrest me okay. for giving them something small. If at all you small. gave them a break, just know that giving breaks is much a crime as taking them. In fact, I lied. I lied! I'm here ready, yeah? I just have to. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Our workplace late morning, clouds were hanging low under the imminent the weight of the imminent rain. They were sunk. She went to see her boss, and then he took her directly to the point. He told her that he was pulling her out of the assignment that he had assigned her to the summit at the pineapple. And he told her why. The live on arrangement, the live on loan arrangement that she had applied that was to start the following week, had started that week instead. And so she was living on a two-year loan arrangement with the Gambia News and West of America. Now, there was a time when the U.S. Uh, uh, policy forbade the VOA, the Voice of Africa, from, from broadcasting. Since such a big companies such as the a British a Broadcasting Corporation could uh, broadcast in their own countries, this really brought a very bad image to the VOA. They got a very big impact that they had to employ senior North Americans in their company. So, and that is how Mackenzie got a post in the VOA. Now, this time, uh, Mackenzie, uh, uh, Mackenzie met with Robert and they had a short conversation. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, come in, Mr. Mackenzie. You're very welcome here. Ah, you see, Miss Mackenzie, uh, I'm sorry I'm going to put you to work straight away. You see, this is a breaking story that uh, is about to begin and uh, it can't wait. So please, uh, take a seat. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Miss Mackenzie, you see, there's a... Uh, first of all, okay, there's a, there's a, there's a summit of uh, 50 heads of state, of African heads of state, that's about to take place at the Simon Hotel in Banjo, Gambia. You see, uh, this is the breaking story that can't wait, and uh, we chose you for, for the job. You see, first of all, your professional expertise will, uh, will uh, help us, and also your African pattern will come in handy. Uh, secondly, Ms. Wano we actually thank the Gambian News for letting you to us, and uh, we also thank uh, you for accepting the terms and conditions of our, of our agreement. And we, in our side, we won't be, uh, we won't be selfish. Uh, we hope you, you will enjoy our, your stay here. I will. Uh, okay, uh, so with that, we want uh, you to cover for us uh, the, the summit uh, proceedings. You will cover it for us. Okay? 
Uh, well, uh, first of all, let me introduce uh, this uh, new arrival from the United States of America, this man, Nicholas uh, Sentinel. Uh, My name is Fiona Makinic, you may call me Fiona. Oh, I am Nicholas Sentinel, but you may call me Nick. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, and uh, Ms. Fiona McKinney, uh, I can see you are uh, you're with Dr. Robert Manley. Huh? Well, I, I, I arrived here yesterday, huh? okay. yes, from uh, Nigeria. My word, you're a new arrival. Welcome to our country. Thank you so much, Adam. May, may God bless you. <laughs> and now, I asked you, I, ha I have heard you asking about uh, what uh, I, if, I, I hope you want yeah, my defense. Yeah, what kind of VOA backup yes, do exactly. Expect? About the backup, about the backup that you have to expect. Now, that's where uh, Nicholas is new. Yes, that's where, so, I'm, being a cowboy. Yeah, that's where I'm here to explain it. Eh? But uh, to start with Mr. Miss, 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 Miss McKenzie, uh, I, want, I, I hope it won't bother you if I mean, ask you this question. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, did you study in Britain? I mean, G, you are Yes, Scotland. Oh, Edinburgh. Eh? Mm -hmm. Oh, now I'm good. Now, uh, now, to go back to the matter at hand, you say that what kind of VOA backup you expect from us? Mm -hmm. I assure you, I expect all the ways. Uh, all the help, all the kind of help you may need in my area, wireless uh, communications. Do you know what that means? No. It means all the non-wired ways of message, uh, message transmission. Uh, and now, my niche in all this is up there. You can see? Where? Up there. In the window? No, I, I monitor electronic transmissions. <laughs> How do you do that? Oh. <laughs> I use what we call the real-time multi-phase mega-channel analyzer. Eh? Uh, call, uh, call that the silent listener. Look at it as an infinite array of radios, eh? From the channel into a single wavelength. From zero all the way to infinity. This is so that it can capture all the air messages. Now by working with this uh, sweetheart, Ms. McKenzie, and can, I can capture zillions mm -hmm. of air messages. And how day. do you do that? Uh, how I do this? Uh, well, Mr. Sentinel, eh? uh, please do not hold back because uh, Ms. Jenna McKenzie is one of us now. Ah, uh, well, but just us even uh, the, the personal dialogue thing. Oh, well, I just ask uh, internet bonus, you see? Yeah. Now, Ms. McKenzie, mm -hmm. I knew from the word go that the summit at the Pineapple Hotel has features of security. Gathering such as that always do. Now, as I soon as I arrived here yesterday, I set up this silent listener. And the check with, 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 with the task of capturing all these messages and all these breaches of security, analyzing them and giving me information as soon as it catches them. The first thing I asked my silent listener to do was to take keynote on each time it hears the word summit. Of course, you know there's a problem with that. The word summit is an English name. So equivalent words in other languages will always blow by, uh, blow by and hard. But uh, I also have such other speech recognition problems I had to go through just to make my silent listener hear the word summit to start with. Don't tell me that you eavesdrop on private conversations. I don't what break, happened to privacy? I don't break it. <laughs> then tell me, what has well, it done for you lately? Well, now has you are, it arrested escape for you? Well, yeah, now you are interested in my old stuff. Tell me, has what, it arrested escape for you? What, what happened to privacy? Well, Miss McKenzie, I got past all these things. The other thing I asked my silent listener to do was to take a special ear on broadcast with the hints to breaches of security. Don't tell me that is tricky because already I know. After all, when can we say that a broadcast has him to breaches of security and when can we not? Not easy, isn't it? Now, I made an assumption. The first thing I assumed was that all broadcasts which are recorded are recorded so that they can hand in to breaches of security. I had to go past all of this. First thing, I had to limit myself into simple calls called disguises. What? Yes, uh, they mask identity but do little else. There are things like gamma and kappa. Have you heard of them? No. These things are identity which uh, they, they are disguises which mask identity. For example, Miss McKenzie, I can play from this uh, this conversation earlier. Uh, about you, you, Miss McKenzie. Talking about uh, you have to go telling somebody called Dr. Bola that you have to go, something has just come up uh, urgently. Can you remember? Uh, yes, that was me. That was you. I shouldn't have called him. May, may I ask who Dr. Bola is? 
Uh, is the summit delegate I was interviewing for the Gambian News. Nick, did you also record the interview itself? No, I did record, I did record all the interview because uh, uh, you all, I only captured that part of the conversation because you said it while your mobile phone was still in a uh, uh, transmission mode. You get that? Now, there was also another episode that he was speaking about uh, at the same same Dr. Follaby telling somebody by the name um, Pastor I don't know, Pastor Chineke Chiamaka or something, that uh, he will be calling him in some, uh, some hole in hotel phones or something like that. Uh, can you remember that thing? Can you remember? I know you can't remember. <laughs> I even don't know who that is. Who that is, yes. You are just right. Now, Miss McKenzie. <laughs> but Miss Mackenzie, meanwhile, as I look for it, this person was saying, uh, was speaking about uh, calling him more often in the hotel landing, landline, thinking, thinking, thinking it to be more secure than their mobile phones. But that was ironic, isn't it? Because at that point, their mobile phones were even more insecure because I managed to capture, uh, capture all those things. But now, Miss Mackenzie. Don't remember, don't, uh, don't worry, eh? I know, uh, as we have, uh, uh, but may, may, may I ask, because this person was also speaking about uh, they having, them having a mission still in a delicate situation. So may I ask what uh, delicate uh, situation was that mission? I don't know. Uh, well, Mr. Nicholas and Yes. I think I have a meeting at the ministry that I really have crushed. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm letting you. So uh, I'd rather go, I'd rather go. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. McKenzie, I hope you will enjoy your stay here. Nicholas, uh, I want you to show Ms. McKenzie her office, mm. yeah, show her the places here. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, Ms. McKenzie, I will not let this, uh, this uh, cowboy bully you, okay? Have a nice meeting at the ministry, Mr. Martin. Ah, uh, well. Go, go, go give them a hand, eh? I'll give them a hand. Oh, sure, Ms. McKenzie. Uh -huh. It is, uh, it is also, uh, <laughs> I, I will show you the room, eh? In fact, I will show you this office come this way. I will show you. Uh, Mr. Tad, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Robert Manley has a very nice uh, office and I think, I think you will uh, enjoy working with him. Eh? Yes.